But I would say that we have a highly evolved instinctive mechanism that we don't control intellectually. Yes. That regulates our energy balance. Mm. And when we undergo periods of privation, the body goes into uh, conservation mode. Mm -hmm. And most people, when they're overfed, it increases their rescue metabolism. But some people increase much more than others. There's some people can who can overeat a lot and their metabolism speeds up and they'll burn that extra off. Other people, their body says, good, great, thanks. I'm going to put it in, put it in the bank account. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, there's inter, inter individual variation to that response, but we all have highly evolved autonomous regulatory mechanisms. Yeah. And so again, the, the, what we've learned to, to leverage is when we put people on a ketogenic diet, we take away the high insulin storage signal yeah. or markedly reduce it, is we give the per body permission to kind of to increase its rate of fat oxidation. Yeah. And that rate of fat oxidation initially is not countered by fat hunger. Right. Uh, but again, we've come to predict, see in ourselves when we try this in ourselves and predict for our patients mm. that once they get to a new homeostatic level, yeah. Um, there is a signal that as long as you don't eat carbs, that, that says eat more fat. Mm, yes. And, and, you know, when we tell people about this, they say, oh, yeah, that's happening to me. <laughs> you know, I open the refrigerator and the butter looks good. Yeah. Or yeah. I walk through, pe through the, past the grocer's case. Yes. And I look at, at skim milk or non fat yogurt and I say, ooh, but the high fat <laughs> yogurt or the, right. the full fat cream and cheese looks good. Once you tell people that this could be occurring, and I, we're not planting a seed, we're just helping them um, see what, what is instinctively there driving their, their desire to eat. Yeah. That, uh, it appears the body can adjust what looks good to it to uh, match its physiological needs. We've had the opportunity to do a fascinating experiment. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically a proof of concept around some of the, you know, based on some of the prior shorter term research that Jeff Volick and I have done, in which uh, we've taken pe in previously people with metabolic syndrome, which is pre-diabetes, which yeah. is associated like diabetes with underlying insulin resistance and mm -hmm. inflammation. Yeah. And with a well-formulated ketogenic diet, we see a prompt before major weight loss, a prompt mm. reduction in insulin resistance and a prompt reduction in inflammation biomarkers. Yeah. And we do that with patients who have weight to lose uh, without counting calories, just holding carbohydrates low enough and protein in moderation so they go into nutritional ketosis. People without counting calories lose quite a bit of weight. Mm. And typically it's in the 10 to 20% of their uh, uh, initial body weight. And so in, in the study that we did with Sarah Hallberg, hmm. uh, when we'd started the company, uh, Verta Health, and we were looking for a, a, a proof of concept study to demonstrate not just that this works in the short term, but that we can put people on a well formulated ketogenic diet, keep them on that diet, not by force, but by education, help hmm. them perceive the, the, the biochemical benefits, you know, mm. we, they test their ketones with a, with a, a blood finger stick, blood ketone meter. But these are people with type two diabetes and they're testing their glucose and they're seeing values, their, their, their elevated values come down to the normal range. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes quite promptly. They're getting off of medications, uh, that had unpleasant side effects and cost them considerable copays for, uh, in terms of cost of medication. So there are real observed benefits. Uh, and then they're, they're, of course, with diabetes, they're tracking this biomarker called hemoglobin A1C. And, mm -hmm. you know, for some of them had diabetes for a decade. The average person right. had diabetes for six years when we enrolled them in the study. Mm. And, you know, for six years, their physicians had been, you know, begging, cajoling, or even wagging their finger at them saying, get your, you know, you got to get this thing down. You yeah. got to eat less, less move calories, <laughs> move more, yeah. uh, lose some weight. And of course, then they're giving them medications that make insulin, either insulin or sulfonylureas that make insulin go up, which sure. counters the, yeah. the body's ability to burn fat. Yeah. Uh, and yet when, when people start seeing success, it's, a, you know, and they're empowered by that process. Yeah.